Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in honor of National Midwifery Week, I'm gonna be giving you a journey through nursing. My journey through nursing. So um, I made a video a long time ago um, that told the story of me becoming a nurse. So this is basically gonna serve as a little bit of background and update since then. So if you guys are new to my channel, welcome. Um, this will give you a little inside scoop to who I am and um, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I update new videos. So let's jump right into it. So let's go back to high school. When I was in high school, I went to a high school that had a school within a school. So the school that was within the school was a health and human service academy. So this was an academy where in junior high school or middle school, you had to know your intentions of being a healthcare provider. So you would then apply to this program and you were interviewed, you would take a test and things like that. And if they accept you, you're into this program, which would give you electives on health and human service type courses. Um, we had to take an internship that was in the healthcare field um, in my senior year. So it was really hardcore. We did like an extra 300 hours of community service in um, high school. And I graduated from this program in 2000 and I'm looking down at my notes so I don't forget the years, but I graduated from this program in 2001. At this time, I really didn't know what I wanted to be. I knew I wanted to be a medical health care provider. In my mind, I wanted to be a physician. Why? Because that's what they tell you growing up, right? So I graduated from that program in 2001. So I'm looking down because I don't want to forget the date. So I then applied to... Um, so many colleges, which was a requirement of the Health and Human Service Academy uh, that you had to apply to at least 20 schools. So of these schools, I chose North Carolina Central University. So yes, I am an alumna of North Carolina Central University, Eagle Pride Amplified. Don't judge me, right? I have pride in my HBCU. Anyway, um, I went to North Carolina Central University and I majored in biology. Um, I majored in biology because I didn't know exactly what type of medical care provider I wanted to be, but I know that that's the route that I wanted to take. Growing up, everyone tells you to be a physician, right? So that was my main train of thought, and I knew that biology would get me there. Um, but it wasn't until like, I want to say late junior year, beginning of senior year, that I started to... Um, that I started to shadow different healthcare uh, providers. And that's when I knew that I wanted to do nursing, but it was like too late, right? Um, it was too late to start all over. So I didn't want to graduate late. I wanted to graduate with my friends and you know, I didn't want it to be a whole waste of time. So I graduated from North Carolina Central University in 2005. Um, I came home and I decided to work a little bit and then I applied to some nursing programs and most of the nursing programs um, I got accepted but it was kind of hard trying to find a non-traditional program so programs that would allow you to work during the day and have classes in the evening um so there was two programs I applied to and I got accepted I chose one of them which was more conducive to um, my schedule um, so before I started the program, I needed to take a couple of prerequisites. So I took those prerequisites and then I started the nursing program. So I think, I think I started there in 2008 and this includes the prereqs. Um, and then I graduated with my bachelor's in, um, my bachelor's in nursing, my BSN, um, in December of 2000, let's see. December of 2011. So um, it was a four-year degree, but because I came in with a biology degree and I had a lot of the science, uh, prereqs, math, and um, things like that, I did not have to do it for the entire four years. So of the nursing program, I would say I was there for maybe two years, maybe two and a half if I can't, I can't remember. But the prereqs that I had to do in the beginning was like econ, uh, statistics, nutrition, and I had to take a chemistry 
was that chemistry? Yes, a chemistry clinical over because when I was in my bachelor's program, I had an advanced, I went to advanced chemistry um, and it was a combined clinical and um, didactic course. So I didn't get an actual credit grade for the clinical. So, because it was combined. So I had to take that clinical course. So that pushed me to the two and a half, year mark or so so like i said i graduated in 2011 in december and upon graduation a lot of my friends were like oh we need to apply for jobs and yada yada so forth and so on and i kind of went with it um initially i applied to one hospital and i chose this hospital because um I had a physician there, a primary care provider, um, years ago, and I really liked the hospital. I liked the facility, so I applied there. I My train of thought was to continue to apply to other hospitals, but because I was so nervous about the NCLEX, I was like, no, you know what? I'm not going to apply to any other jobs right now because I want to focus on the NCLEX and make sure I... Um, past the NCLEX, right? Because I think that would be so embarrassing. Like, not that I wasn't confident, but I was really scared of this test. But I figured if I did not, if I did not pass and I had already accepted a position to call them and say, I'm sorry, I didn't pass my exam would be horrible, right? Because what does it look like calling back later? Especially if this was my number one, my number one facility to work in. If I call them back later and like, yeah, I passed now. I'm like, ah. Granted, it happens and it's nothing to be ashamed of, but I just wanted to make sure that my whole package deal that I would present um, would be complete. But little did I know that one, one place that I applied to, they actually called me back within a week of applying. And um, they called and said, hey, can we schedule an interview for this week? So I scheduled the interview and this was a phone interview with someone in, um, in human resources. Um, they did like the recruitment for new nurses. So um, I had a very nice interview and he invited me there to do another interview. So when I got there, I interviewed with someone else in human resources. And so this application uh, process was like a step-by-step -step type of thing. So once I interviewed with them, if they felt that I was good enough, I moved on to take the nurse battery test. But if I passed that, then I would move along to the panel interview. So what I didn't know that I would move on to the panel interview that same day. I thought that they were scheduling and I would come back. So I was like tired after this, but I shook it off. I got myself together and I, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but you gotta give yourself a pat on the back. I remember this panel interview so vividly and I crushed it. I passed the the um, panel interview. It was like three people just firing off questions. Um, I passed that. And before I left, uh, they scheduled me to come back in to meet with a unit manager. So I I came back in. I interviewed with the, with the unit manager. And about a day later, they called me and offered me the position. And so I was, you know, I was elated you know and this was a med search unit i was happy that i got the job but i, I don't know how i felt about med search right but this is where the big butt comes in so um the very next day someone in human resources called me and they had to resend the offer why because there were two managers on that unit and both of them interviewed two candidates i and another person and not knowing that both of them offered each one of us the position and didn't communicate with each other was you know it was a big mess and because the other candidate applied i mean had her interview before me they honored her offer first so I was devastated. Like I cried, like I cried, even though, even though I did not want a med search job, I knew med search was not for me. Um, I wanted labor and delivery. However, their internship program didn't start until the summer and I didn't want to miss out on getting a job. Right. But I cried like, like, like this was really the job that I wanted, but like I cried so bad. So the next day, so um, the initial guy that did my phone interview, he called me back and he said, hey, you know what? Everyone was so impressed with your interview process that they want you to come back in and um, interview with another unit. So of course I'm like, okay, which unit is it? Da -da -da. And it was the cardiac unit. Um, and I was like, okay, you know, cardiac, Cardiac and neuro was like the two things that scared the crap out of me in nursing school and I wasn't that great in it. But um, 
I was like, okay, sure. You know, um, so they wanted to me to be a part of the critical care internship. And um, I took, so this internship was with like ICU, ED, and um, cardiac. But part of this cardiac would take some of the med surge uh, internship classes as well. It was kind of mixture. But anywho, I came back in, I interviewed with the manager, and on my way home, I got an email and they offered me the position. I wanted to verify to make sure this position was mine, but yes, it was mine. So then I had to decide what date I needed to take my NCLEX. This was very important because the, the start date for the job was March the 6th. And I needed to take my NCLEX in a time frame that I would be able to give my current job um, adequate notice, you know, that I would be leaving. So they already knew that I was, you know, leaving because I was finished nursing school and, you know, things like that. And they were very, very supportive, but I wanted to make sure I gave them adequate notice. So in order for me to do that, I scheduled my exam for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, right? I mean, who wants to be stressed out on Valentine's Day? But anywho... Um, I then proceeded to put together a study plan. I took the Kaplan review course and I used a host of other uh, materials to study. I did a video on how I, how I passed the NCLEX. I'm going to link that in the description box below so that you guys can check it out to see what it, um, what I used to study. Um, but anywho, I created this whole plan. I studied, 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 like studying for the NCLEX almost gave me an ulcer. <laughs> like I would study for hours. I would study while I was at work. I would study when I got home, like until like the midnight wee hours. And even if I would fall asleep, if I wake up to use the bathroom, I would be like, oh, what was that lab value? And that would prompt me to stick my head in a book and study for another couple of hours, knowing I had to get up to go to work in the morning. Anywho, I was happy when Valentine's Day got here. Super duper nervous all day. I took the test. Um, I took the test and I paid for the, um, the three day, you know, to get your results in three days. So from the moment I ended the test, I left out. When I stepped outside the door, I cried. You guys, like I was snot bubble tears crying. I had to walk to the train station, which was about four blocks away, still crying. People was outside, everything. So then I, um, I had to ride the train to where, I, the metro train to where I parked my car, crying on the train, crying all the way home, took a nap, didn't even want to celebrate Valentine's Day, but I did. Um, so this, till then Friday came and I was at work when my results got emailed to me and I was ecstatic. So I then gave my job my two weeks notice. So then I started, um, I stopped working that Friday, oh no, that Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday and then I had to start work that Monday or Tuesday whichever day the six was I don't know I started working I went through this whole intern you know like the uh, preceptorship and all of that my preceptors were amazing um I'm still uh cool with them to this day I have one that I haven't really talked to as often but I do talk to her on Instagram um, but there's one that I work with now. We actually work on the same unit um, in labor and delivery. So um, they were amazing. They helped me really get through it. But I was not really happy there. Um, I knew from nursing school that I wanted to be a labor and delivery nurse. So I never could, you know, even though I got confident and, and comfortable with my skills, I never really was happy. You know, when I started... Um, I would cry every day. I would cry when it was time to go to work. I would cry on my way home from work. I would cry at work. Like in any room that wasn't the patient room, I was crying. The bathroom, the break room, the locker room, the medication room, like all the rooms. It was so bad. But I pressed through. And um, after about a year on the unit, um, I was talking to another nurse and she noticed that I wasn't really happy. So she says, Marquia, you have to do what you want to do because, you know, you can't work in nursing and not be happy. That's going to trickle over to your patients, right? So I kind of took her advice. I hopped on my my facility, my hospital's website to see if they had any labor and delivery positions available. They did not. So I applied to another hospital. And um, I applied to another hospital. And they sent me an email for an interview. And... Um, I don't know. I, I, do, I really wasn't satisfied. So I prayed on it. I prayed on it, prayed on it. And then like a couple days later, something just kind of ticked and said, hey, check your hospital back in. Four positions available. 
on labor and delivery. Oh my goodness. So that next day I had to go to work. I always work nights. So that morning I got up, I went over to the labor and delivery unit and I introduced myself to the manager. I let her know that I was interested in the position. Um, what, and you know, asked her, what did I need to do to apply? So she told me and I applied to, um, I applied and I came in for an interview. I interviewed with her and then I interviewed with a panel of the nurses and supervisors on the floor. So, um, that was on a Monday, but the prior Friday I interviewed with the other hospital on my way home, that hospital offered me the position. I didn't want to accept it because I knew I was going to interview at my hospital. So I didn't respond. Um, I let the weekend go through and then I interviewed at my hospital. I feel like both interviews went well, but I didn't get a call back from my job, my hospital initially. I was so stressed. I was like, wait a minute. So it wasn't until the end of the week that she called and offered me the position. I was like jumping around and screaming. Um, so I started on labor and delivery. I'm sorry. Let me give you back some dates. My cardiac position started in 2012 and then I started on labor and delivery unit in 2013. So, anywho, when I started over on labor and delivery, they had a perinatal program, which was training the nurses to work in antepartum, postpartum, newborn, nursery, labor and delivery, and triage. So, um, so that way, whenever you come in, you can go to any unit and, you know, be able to work. But somehow that program... Um, disassembled and we got the choice to choose where we wanted to work and of course i love labor and delivery so i wanted to stay there um while working on labor and delivery i got to observe the midwives oh my goodness I, you all you guys already know how i feel about this um from my previous video um on why i wanted to be a midwife but um i then applied to midwifery school and i applied in 2015 and about October, um, I put together my package and everything, and I got um, accepted in December. Um, in February, I went to the school. Um, I went to the school, and we had to do like an orientation process, but my program was online. So I started the actual program classwork in April or May, and... Um, the didactic courses went all the way up until the end of 2017. Yes, 2017, because I started clinical. I had a whole ordeal about trying to find a preceptor and it was, it was crappy. And um, at the last minute, I found a preceptor and I was able to continue through my program because I almost had to take a leave of absence. I'm going to do a video on how to land a preceptor because if you have the daunting task of finding your own preceptor, you're going to need these tips. So stay tuned for that. Um, but anyway, I started my clinicals in April April 2018, I have a whole series. Um, actually, I have a whole midwifery series that I, you know, kind of recorded through my whole matriculation. But um, clinical wise, I have another, I have those videos recorded as well. So I finished clinicals at the end of 2018. I had to take another course um, and I finished school. I graduated from midwifery school in uh, March of. I graduated from midwifery school in March of 2019 and I took forever to take my board exams like I procrastinated it is recommended that you take it right away I needed a brain break I couldn't do it but I eventually took them the day after Christmas 2019 I took my board exam and I passed and I'm a certified nurse midwife so that's where I am right now. That has been my journey through nursing. I know this has been a long video. Thank you guys for listening if you made it to the end. And if you did make it to the end, put a red heart in the comments below. Let me know also if you want me to do that video on how to land a preceptor. And thank you guys for listening. And I will see you next time. Make sure you stay focused, stay fabulous. Bye.